Pro Wrestling Podcast. I am Bubba. Listen up, wrestling fans. Yes, sir. That's right, geeks. Michael Cole is a body with a bag of milk. Are you done playing Tickle Mud, huh? You look like a shoe. Uh, what? No, yes. I'm a Hana player! Go ahead, Byron, get excited. That's right, Byron, go ahead and get excited because this is the best pro wrestling podcast, WrestleMania prediction extravaganza. We're going to go through the entire WrestleMania card. We're going to go through the TakeOver card. And yes, Super Card of Honor for Ring of Honor, available exclusively on the Fight TV app for uh, 30 bucks. We're going to go over that card as well. Uh, I am Tommy Stryker, host of the show and the former indie wrestler with an asterisk. Joining me in studio is Joe... Uh, Oops! I, I got uh, I got Joe on a different can't microphone. Can't even get unmuted around this place. All right, Joe's here on. I got I got him on the uh, I got him on Taco's mic this week. That's why we switched it up a little bit. Yeah, I feel uh, the taco power. I just feel the urge to go check out Seth Rollins' <laughs> dick pics. But we got since uh, oh, dude, since we got Taco I've been faffing to them all week. <laughs> As you can tell, maybe tell Taco is uh, live via satellite coming to uh, coming to us from uh, somewhere on, on the east side of town. Where are you at there, Taco? Oh, where the fuck am I? Um, <laughs> uh, I got I to gotta warn you guys, I'm drunker than a bitch right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the only way to fly when you're, when you're talking uh, pro wrestling. I'm uh, in uh, uh, Hagerstown, Maryland right now. Nice. Okay. So, yeah. It's a quite interesting area. It's like a, it's a city full of Ellsworths. <laughs> so much like our so own Anoka. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say though, the people out here they're they're pretty nice people. Just um uh yeah, learn how to drive out here, you fucks. <laughs> well, that being said, let's get right into the news. <laughs> Before we start yeah, offending right all of our listeners. News for you. <laughs> news, 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 Just one quick news item news. I wanted to get into on the show. I talked about it a little bit on the other podcast. I do strong honor for the fans podcast, podcasting network, where I talk about Ring of Honor and New Japan exclusively for that. Uh, bunch of guys over there, but I uh, haven't talked about it here yet, and it's pretty big. It seemed like pretty big news when it broke on the internet. The rumors that WWE looking to buy Ring of Honor. Well, they're, they, they're, I guess they're not really rumors, but they've been looking to buy them or interested in buying them uh, for quite some not, some time now. This kind of goes back all the way to August. when uh, Remember when WWE was sending out those surveys? What kind of indie wrestling would you possibly be interested in seeing on the network? And so they threw out you know, Ring of Honor, TNA, things like that. And then the whole flow slam thing erupted or whatever. Um, so WWE, WWE is interested in the Ring of Honor library right now with, you know, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, uh, Tyler Black, fucking Claudio Castanoli, however, however you say his name, uh, <laughs> Antonio Cesaro and, 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 and Seth Rollins, all these guys. They came through Ring of Honor, Daniel Bryan. So WWE has an interest in that library not just to throw it up on the network but you know produce cool documentaries you get the old footage involved stuff like that so that's kind of where all that comes from but there was a big hubbub about this because uh the pro wrestling sheet put it out there is it was almost like a clickbait headline and it got a lot of attention but this is the kind of thing that's just been kind of flying under the radar and it doesn't feel like to me and this is just how i feel right now it really doesn't feel like wwe is about to buy Ring of Honor. I feel like there would yeah. there would be a different feeling in the air, you know. And plus, Ring of Honor is not that big of competition. You, they're not that. They're really not competition at all. It would just be nice for WWE to own that library. But I don't think they're going to fork over the kind of money that where Ring of Honor is going to be willing to sell. Now you do have the issue that Ring of Honor is owned by Sinclair Broadcasting, and they don't necessarily have. Uh, an emotional attachment possibly to Ring of Honor. There's also the stuff going on where Sinclair Broadcasting is looking at partnering up with this other network television merger kind of a thing uh, that's going on right now. And so they might be looking to cut costs or who knows. So there's a little bit of that going on. But what are your guys' thoughts on the Ring of Honor to new uh, uh, purchase possibly by WWE? Taco? Um, you know, when the first, uh, the news first broke, uh, I, I believe we were doing, um, uh, that other podcast, the aggression of, um, attitude of aggression, attitude of aggression. Uh, they brought it up when we were on there 
And my first thought was, you know, it's it's definitely not needed at all for WWE. You know, they've never really been a fierce competition to WWE. Um, I don't think they ever will be. It was amazing that you know, TNA even got close to even being thought as competition. Um, but my first, you know, thought was buy out Ring of Honor. No. Uh, maybe buy their back catalog and put it on the network. Yeah, because you know me personally, um, not this week specifically, but last week, um, I was tearing up a lot of these matches. You know, with Dan O'Brien, Dan O'Brien and Cesaro, and going down uh, a YouTube hole. Yeah, I went down that YouTube hole, and um, <laughs> you know, Ring of Honor. You know, I was surprised. You know, uh, it's a part of the whole uh, hashtag Throwback Thursday thing, and they're definitely getting on that bandwagon too by throwing old matches, and it's fucking great. That's sleep. right, geeks. <laughs> it, it, it's it, it. A lot of these matches, you know, almost all these matches were phenomenal. Um, yeah. Um, I I guess I I uh, the last one I just watched was uh, Owens and. Um, fucking generico against the young bucks oh wow nice yeah phenomenal nice. fucking match and uh at the end of the match hashtag spoiler alert uh <laughs> is uh when they lost the match and that's when owens turned on zane and that essentially was the start of their feud that's still going to this day that we just saw on monday um so you know i i feel like that's an important kind of back history that wwe could broadcast to their fans and the audience because you know someone like me i still i still view uh i tweeted it yesterday sammy Z- sammy zane is the millhouse of the wwe <laughs> oh hold on. Ah, 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 ah. Taco's got 205 live on. We don't have it in the studio today because it's usually on Taco's laptop, but uh, <laughs> we still get our Tozawa yelling in. And actually, I'm very, I'm very interested in watching 205 live this week. It's finally mm-hmm. going to be Tozawa versus Kendrick. So, Taco, keep the spoilers to yourself because I'm going to watch 205 li- live a little later. Uh, right. <laughs> But, uh, but uh, my point was, though, yeah. it, it would, I, th- I really do feel like it would be beneficial for WWE to kind of showcase these superstars because look how hard it was for Dan and Bryan to, you know, finally break that seal. And then when he finally broke that seal, he, he's injured and they don't want him to be a star. You have uh, Cesaro sh- sections upon Cesaro sections at every arena. And, you know, I feel like the common WWE fan, they don't understand that. You know, uh, hardcore dorks like us, we get that. And uh, uh, that's what? No, they, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's something I feel like they need to just, you know, show the audience a little bit. There's, yeah. you know, they they have a great relationship. That's no secret that WWE and Ring of Honor have a good relationship. So I just, you know, in the long run, it would help Ring of Honor. It would help WWE. And it would help uh, broadcast a lot of these superstars like Cesaro. Well, if I mean, if WWE buys Ring of Honor, that's not going to help Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor is either going to cease, cease to exist I- or- <laughs> I'm not saying buy Ring of Honor. I'm saying, you know, buy, you know, maybe their old catalog because, you know, we, we talked about this on a prior podcast where yeah. it's like you can subscribe to their membership. I think it's only eight bucks a month, but um, it's the old, old Internet. It's grandpa's Internet. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you have to go out and it's just it's not, you know, it's not sexy. It's not just. Pick your show, pick your year, pick, you know. Yeah, it's a, a list. Star. It's the list of everything. <laughs> you have to find it. Yeah. And uh, WWE could definitely capitalize on that, you know, like uh, Cesaro Classics or Brian Classics. I, I agree that the WWE pre- presentation of it all would be better uh, and would showcase that talent better. But I don't want to see Ring of Honor going away. And if I th- I, th- I feel like it, it, WWE is not going to strike a deal where they just get the tapes and not the right. brand itself. They're going to want the whole thing. Uh, and so that would, I mean, even if they kept the brand like they did with ECW, it's not going to be the same. ECW is never the same. If Ring of Honor is owned by uh, WWE, it's not going to be the same. Joe, what are your thoughts on the situation? I had just a roller coaster of emotion for five minutes when I pulled up, you know, my dirt sheet that I pull up every morning to check out and I see all this news and just jump to conclusions and I read and I read and I'm just like, ah, you know, this just sounds... It, it, I don't see anything of it. I don't make it news to me because I don't think WWE even has a shot. Like you said, they either want it all or nothing. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. means they're going to get nothing because I see ring of honor just making that stand. They they've got their brand. They know what they're doing and they'll stick to their guns. And that's one of the things you like about ring of honor. Yeah. And they, and they, they do okay. You know, they're not making a ton of money, but you know, they're, they're making it work. And obviously they know they're making stars. Go ahead. Taco. 
they know they're they know that they're making the stars you know that the, they're like the first big uh, stepping stone before they make it to a wwe you know right and that's another argument for keeping ring of honor as is because WWE has their own developmental, but look at the stars they get. I mean, Ring of Honor is such a great feeder system to WWE. You know, you have you haven't been able to create that same level of superstar out of the out of the performance center that you from a guy that you get off the indie scene. So, mm-hmm. all right, well, let's change the subject. It's time to get into WrestleMania predictions. It's time to get into. Let's start with uh, some SmackDown. Change shows. the subject. SmackDown Live. <laughs> I think Taco should do the show drunk all the time. It's it's great. You do. So- I gotta give a quick shout out in uh, <laughs> fucking dude. I have had like the best sandwich of my life. It's a, the the <laughs> my, <laughs> like today's my best pro wrestling part. podcast brought to you by the best sandwich of Taco's life. <laughs> These motherfuckers cram the fries on the sandwich. All right, <laughs> I could do that myself. I- yeah, my exact words were I was having an orgasmic seizure and I was two bites away from sticking my dick in that sandwich, <laughs> which I didn't. <laughs> well, thank God. Because <laughs> There would have been uh, uh, dick pics all over the internet right next to Seth Rollins. Well, and if you stick your dick in the sandwich and then somebody accidentally eats the dick, that can lead to a lot of issues. Do you feel sluggish or tired throughout the day? <laughs> have you ever thought the problem could be your liver? My liver. So you don't want to do that. <laughs> what were we talking about again? Smackdown Live. Smackdown <laughs> Live. So the show started to, uh, we just got done watching Smackdown. It is Tuesday. We record the show Tuesdays after Smackdown. So we get your Smackdown, your Raw, and all of that. So it started off with Shane and AJ, the contract signing. I enjoyed this. You know, we, we talk about how... We haven't. We don't like the idea of Shane being in a WrestleMania match with AJ. But I liked this this segment. Shane was okay. AJ was really good. He, you know, they signed the contract, and AJ's like, "Dude, I know what I know what you've been through. You've been in matches with all these guys. But look, we're just in a straight up match. And you want to you want to throw hands. You want to you want to high fly. You want to wrestle. I'm better than you in all categories. Whatever you want to do. So I liked the uh, the AJ promo, but. Uh, uh, I don't know, Joe. I know you have some opinions on AJ Styles being in a match with Shane McMahon at WrestleMania. I just feel like it's a waste. I mean, we had <laughs> there's any uh, an opponent. I was saying to you, I would take Titus O'Neil <laughs> versus him <laughs> over Shane McMahon because I one. I mean, let's be honest. We don't want to see Shane get hurt. I mean, he's he's older. <laughs> he says that, and he takes he takes a lot of chances, which is you know the main highlight of wanting to see Shane McMahon, but. You've got one of the best wrestlers in the world, possibly the best wrestler of the last year, against Shane McMahon. I mean, think about think about that Undertaker match from last last year. Was it really all that spectacular? Minus his giant bump. That was it. It was just the bump. That's that's all. And that's the, just it's just it, it's that's not worth Shane's it. Shane's whole me. wrestling career. <laughs> but but <laughs> I mean, like you said, it was a good promo. I just don't <clears> think that it was enough to make me excited or get that build into the match. It got me excited to see AJ just beat the shit out yeah, of Shane. That's which be is lost. which is weird because AJ's supposed to be the bad guy. <laughs> so <laughs> there's an issue there. I lo- I mean even when when at the end of Shane's part of the of the promo and he says I'm, you know, I'm going to be the guy with my hand raised at the end. The crowd who's supposed to love Shane McMahon. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting dynamic between these two. Taka, what were your thoughts on this part? Um, I, I agree with you. I thought um, I, I tweeted out that I was like AJ Styles' promo was awesome, but that did nothing for me for the match. Um, it, 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 you know, it's, it's still one of those things where it's just like um, it's going to show you how good AJ Styles is. Yeah, he's against Shane McMahon because um, you know he pointed out, and I thought that was great that he pointed that out. That you know, hey man, this is a, a wrestling match. You stay out of the ring for more than ten seconds, you'll lose. That was a good point. Yeah, and I, 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 and I, I, I love that point, but um, you know, it's just one of those things where it's just like, yeah, I, I agree with Joe that I feel like it's a wasted talent, but at the same time, it's really going to showcase AJ uh, AJ Styles' talent when he's going to be able to put over um, Shane McMahon. I think you're a moron. So, what's your prediction <laughs> there, Taco? Um, you know, 
Um, another thing that too that drove me nuts was uh, yeah. Shane McMahon uh, saying that you know when he, when they started the company that they viewed AJ Styles you know as the best and that they were going to run SmackDown. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, towards <laughs> the superstars and you know not the management, but you're still in the match. Right, you know, your you're management in the fucking top match, top. but it's not about management. <laughs> <laughs> Like we go to Raw and it's like, oh, we got bad cop McMahon, and then we go to SmackDown, and we got good cop McMahon, but it's still Sit, Ubu, Sit, McMahon. Pat, but um, you know, <laughs> has Shane McMahon even ever won a fucking match? Uh, he has, but not in a very long time, and it's uh, probably a good posse thing. involved, right? Something um, probably along those lines. It, you My know, it, it would be absolute ridiculous for AJ Styles to lose match. So you know, it has to be an AJ Styles match unless, um. For some odd reason, you know, sh- uh, Shane does like a heelish thing and has someone debut. Not like, you know, it, you know it's gonna have to be something <laughs> Shane, ridiculous. Like Shane that being in Shane being in the match is a heelish thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Shane is make no mistake about it. Here, there, any everywhere at WrestleMania, Shane is the heel in this match, and mm-hmm. Shane will lose. AJ wins. Uh, whether it ends up being an actual turn for AJ, that's yet to be seen. I mean, I mean, imagine well, what if it's a turn for Shane, though? I mean, you know, it's uh, it could like, be. What we've been talking about Roman Reigns, a double turn. Ugh, but uh, more heel authority figures. Ugh, no, 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 yeah, no. no, no. I think you could get a better no. guy. <laughs> I think you could get a better dynamic out of Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon than <laughs> Stephanie and Mick Foley. Holy shit! Kendrick has him in a headlock. All right. Uh, so I, I think we all got our pretty. Everybody thinks AJ's going to win. Gonna win. All right, mm-hmm. then on SmackDown, Lynch versus Carmella. It was supposed to be a, a one-on-one match. Of course, two of the other competitors are at ringside. It turns into a brawl. And then big surprise, it's the Teddy Long moment of the show. Holla, holla. It becomes a tag team match. And then it, uh, again. Uh, I'm going to make this a tag team match. For some reason, mm-hmm. in the middle of the tag team match, Natalia comes out and goes on to commentary at the oddest awkward moment of the match and then it's time to go to commercial so then they come back from commercial they're still having a match natalia gets involved uh what the hell ends up alexa and carmella end up getting the win with uh carmella uh getting the uh, the roll up over the li- over becky lynch of all people uh and the uh with the assist from james ellsworth so it's going to be at wrestlemania the smackdown women all facing each other in what we still do not know what the match will be in the dumbest uh, form of booking ever <laughs> because I mean, I give us something to get excited that. about. Uh, what was that, Taco? I think they dropped that whole thing. Uh, I uh, no, they um, were still the talking fast- about it all over SmackDown. They, they well, still- no, no. I noticed. Uh, uh, fast forward to SmackDown spoilers uh, with Naomi coming out. I actually did have her written down. I got some fucking. I got notes today, motherfuckers. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I actually had Naomi down, uh, maybe being a surprise entrant at WrestleMania. Uh, it just SmackDown beat us to the punch so right, right. um so I well, well let's i think that was i honestly <laughs> think that was a I good move i you- noticed uh, after that she debuted they stopped with the whole available female superstar thing it was just it's gonna be a six-pack challenge did they say six-pack challenge i didn't they remember. did yes okay okay well interesting i don't believe you because i didn't hear that either but i mean you, you never Joe. know <laughs> <laughs> so as it stands right now it's bliss Lynch, Natalia, Carmella, Mickey James, and Naomi. So a lot of people, the internet blew up, or you know, has been blowing up. Who else is going to be in the match? Because as we were just talking about, they had been hyping it up as ever, any available SmackDown competitor. So I mean, people were speculating because Lita's been doing some shows. Summer Rae has been gone. Emma has been teasing coming back on Raw, but how about Swerve and put her on put her on SmackDown? Eve Torres is apparently around in town. I've heard some rumblings of Molina. Molina is another one. Kelly Kelly, Victoria, I've heard. Maria Kanellis is now available, and she's doing stuff WrestleMania weekend. So that's a ton of names. They could all show up, but if Taco says it's going to be a six-pack challenge, that must be what it's going to be. So let's let's just assume right now it is just those six. Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch, Natalia, Carmella, Mickey James, and Naomi. Predictions. 
Uh, I originally had Becky Lynch down as my prediction just because I like that story the best, and she's my favorite babyface on the roster. But that was before I knew Naomi was coming back. So with Naomi coming back, that hometown kid story or whatever that you know that she wants to tell with her being from Orlando and all the uh, she's heavily involved with uh, some charity stuff from what happened with. Uh, Oh, what was that? That nightclub shooting that was there in. Uh, oh yeah, in, in Orlando. So she's she was involved with some stuff with that, and so WWE likes the the people that do the charity stuff. <laughs> so there's that aspect. Not to mention the storyline stuff where she, the champion, she was the new champion, got injured, had to give up the title. So I'm moving over. I'm thinking they're going to go back to Naomi. Uh, Taco, what do you think on this one? Um, I originally I had a um, prediction. Sur- <laughs> I had a surprise circled because I thought there was going to be a surprise entrant. I made a list before SmackDown, actually, and then Naomi came out. So <laughs> was I was between be- the, the surprise and a uh, surprise entrant, and I was surprised uh, uh, between uh, Alexa Bliss keep retaining the championship. Um, but I'm leaning towards Naomi. I know it's a big uh, thing and not winning in your hometown, but you know, like you said, she's been she's been on a run and. Um, yeah, I feel like she's going to take it. Joe. Well, everybody's leaning to Naomi. <laughs> like, I feel like I should be different. I actually, I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm, I'm going to go with Taco's original prediction. I think Bliss is going to walk back out. Thank you, Joe. Just, Thank you. Just because. <laughs> Thank you. Of all, there's one we don't know what the match is. I feel like there'll be some shenanigans involved with how she does it, even at WrestleMania. But it just sets up a good, you know heel baby face run after WrestleMania with whoever she, you know, shenanigans. <laughs> and it, you know, it really depends too because is Naomi fully ready to come back? She didn't too? look. Like ready. When, she looked limping. But, but yeah, when she came out she was definitely limping, but then once she got in the ring she looked okay. So I guess it, yeah, it depends. Maybe it's on, like wrestler kayfabe just the, in the mind kind of kicked in all of a sudden. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, but that's the thing though too is like they don't, they're not going to want to put the title on her if she has to give it up again right away. <laughs> Although right. that's exactly what they did with Zack Ryder last year at WrestleMania. So who knows? The, the fun part here is that, you know, maybe, I mean, this SmackDown w- women's match should be one of the better in-ring matches, hopefully. Uh, but there isn't a lot of good in-ring intrigue with a lot of these matches, as we pointed out in the AJ Shane situation. So I like that a, we, some, uh, some, some of these matches have intrigue in them. Who's actually going to win? So that's the kind of the fun part here. Go ahead, Taco. We should also point out that this match is going to be on the pre-show. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, there, there might be several on the pre-show with the actual which length I, I'm of not WrestleMania. too mad at because, you know, with the lineup that's on the pre-show, you know, it's like a lot of matches that are WrestleMania caliber, um, it's just they need to take the pre-show serious. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the whole thing is serious. I mean, they, there's 12 matches here. Uh, every match is big. There's really too much WrestleMania. There are too many matches. There, there isn't even a SmackDown tag team match on the on the show because there's just there's just just too much. So, mm. uh, and and I was I was fine with them get those guys getting thrown into the Andre Battle Royal because there is just too much stuff. You know, save some stuff for other stuff. That's mm-hmm. so I'm I'm fine with that. Uh, then a uh, breezy Bella, the, <laughs> he wants in the women's <laughs> match. And okay, we talk about how we usually hate these backstage skits in the office. With you know, they cut to Daniel Bryan on the phone for no reason, and then somebody comes in. It's stupid. They make no sense. But when they get it right, <laughs> or when they're just sold so well, like Daniel Bryan is, is, he's like, no, there's no way you can you can join the women's match. And Tyler Breeze gets upset, takes off the wig. <laughs> Daniel Bryan's like, what? Tyler Breeze. <laughs> <laughs> completely sells it, and then uh, Fandango comes in. They're like, "Ah, oh, oh, we we don't have nothing for WrestleMania." And Daniel Bryan's like, "I got one more spot for two people in the Entree the Giant Memorial Battle Royal." And then they celebrate, and Daniel Bryan is in on the celebration, and he's very excited. <laughs> and then and then Brizongo leaves, and he's like, "Oh, what are you guys just going to leave me hanging?" So I love that he does, doesn't do the typical just stare off into the distance as as the as the wrestlers leave. He 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 throws an extra line in there, so. Uh, uh, an, a, a typical dumb WWE skit made great by Daniel Bryan just fucking hamming it up and, and being great. So I enjoyed that. Well, shit, even Tyler Breeze was great in that. Um, yeah. I, I agree with you. I liked it a lot. Um, I don't know if you guys got a chance to watch that um, uh, Corey Graves, Kurt Angle interview. Huh. Um, it was only like 10 minutes long. I yeah, it I watched it. Watch. It was more of like a recap of Angle's career. But, yeah. um 
minus the TNA. Like where he's like, you did a lot of good things in the ring, um, but there was also a lot of entertainment you brought to the backstage se- segments too. And Kurt Angle was like, oh yeah, you know the the milk truck, the guitar, the hats, all that goofy shit. Yeah, you know this kind of situation kind of reminded me of you know that kind of si- not Kurt Angle caliber, you know, but you know it's just like yeah, when you strike a right chord with the goofy shit, it's great. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> That's all I got for that. Later in the show, there was a 10 uh, man tag with uh, a bunch of guys. Uh, Mojo ends up getting a win over Tyler, never seen that Tyler Breeze. On Monday Night Raw, uh, oh. since we're just talking about the Battle Royal, we'll kind of mix things together a little bit here. Uh, Monday Night Raw had a very different version of this. They had an over the top rope challenge <laughs> where it started with <laughs> it, it, it was like Big Show and he's just throwing guys out, and then guys come back in and they throw Big Show out. And then, guys, the, the thing just ends. There's never a bell. Nobody knows what happened. And it, nobody cares. And you, you wonder why people don't give a shit about your, your... You wonder why ratings are down. You wonder why people don't care about the TV shows. You wonder why people don't care about the matches on the TV shows. Because you present them with a, a, a who cares attitude. I like that Braun comes out. He says, you know, I could come down. That's like Braun's new thing. Like, yep. I could come down there if I want to, but I don't want to. <laughs> that's like, that's like, I want him to do that every week. <laughs> so uh, I, I like that aspect of it, but uh, since we're on the the battle, ro- so in that aspect, the ten man tag I thought though compared to what they did with the over the top rope challenge on Monday, I really liked the ten man tag better. Mm-hmm. The spots getting into the finish were more fun, and you actually got a guy over in Mojo Rowley. It, it kind of points out the 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 big difference between who the big battle royal favorites are on Raw and SmackDown. SmackDown's got Mojo, <laughs> and then Raw's mm. got. A big Show and Braun Strowman, so there's that. Uh, so that all that being said, where are we at? <laughs> Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. I have Pelvis Wesley as your winner. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, too bad, man. You can't take down Chad, too bad. Taco, where are you at on the Memorial Battle Royal? Hold on, I got to open another beer. <laughs> <laughs> I might go get well, one myself here. You keep doing that at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, my my biggest thing right now with this is, um, yeah, you know, Strowman's been fucking great. He's one of the hottest talents right now on Raw, and he's on the fucking pre-show to the Andre the Giant Battle Rumble. Uh, that's kind of disappointing to me. Um, I know he's the big favorite to win it. Um, I don't think he needs to win it at all. I think he's over enough, and I think he made himself a big enough threat. Uh, to me, the biggest person that really needs to win, though, and would really um, that needs it is Zane. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, you know, I, I like that that prediction, Joe. What what are you what are your thoughts on the it's Memorial tough, Battle Royal? Tough call, but I think they being WWE and how predictable they'll be with this match because it it really is just a throwaway match to them. And now is mm-hmm. they'll go with Braun. Did it do it? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Yeah, I'm with you. I think it's going to be Braun. I like Taco's mm-hmm. idea of Zayn, though. That's a that's a nice uh, underdog story. Yeah. It, 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 it could, really come, could it, use it. It could come I down. Honestly, to I can see that as the final two. Yeah, that'd be kind nice. of go fast forward to Raw a little bit. Um, you know, when Zayn entered himself in, into it, and Stephanie McMahon, you know, boop, popped out of the corner and said, "Uh, <laughs> no, you're gonna have to earn your spot. This is Raw. You earn everything you got." Bullshit. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, I I like that. And I was honestly hoping he would lose the match to the point that he'd be like, you know what, um, um, wasn't his job on the line? Yes. You know, I was hoping he would lose it so he would get fired. So SmackDown would be like, you know what? Um, <laughs> Go to SmackDown, we'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll hire you and we'll put you on there. And Zayn won and uh, SmackDown has the fucking championship. So I thought that would have been a great move right there. But no, oh, you know. <laughs> that that was a fun part of 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 that Kevin Owens. I mean, if you're gonna make Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn fresh again, that's a good way to do it. You know, put his job on the line, and then the, all the fans start picturing in the head that oh, we could end up on SmackDown. So I'm seriously sick of their feud. Like, I, <laughs> it, it, it's just it's so meaningless at this point. It's just like we know they're two great superstars. We know they have a history together. We know they can fucking put on a clinic in that fucking ring, but they're shoving it, you know, in our throats every every time they can and it's, like, <laughs> and it's just like that's it's such a special feud because we do know that they're such good friends we, they have such a deep history and 
uh, it's just WWE is just throwing it out there like it's just 20 bucks, you know, like it's nothing. Then getting back to SmackDown, we had Miz TV with the Total Bellas BS finale. Uh, I loved this whole thing. Uh, great stuff from Miz and Maurice on the skit again. I loved Miz Im- impersonating Daniel Bryan. Uh, again, <laughs> phenomenal stuff. And then getting serious at the end, taking off the, uh, the John Cena uh, gear and whatnot. Uh, very good. And then Cena and, and uh, uh, Nikki, their end of the promo. Very, very good. Cena fucking tapping him on the nuts and saying, what, what are you, shooting blanks there, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that stuff, uh, saying that, you know. Cena with the tipper? Oh, yes. And then, yeah, and then uh, Cena saying, well, you, uh, Miz is the one that brought Maurice back so he could get on Total Divas. So <laughs> that was an awesome line. So this this match is very, very interesting, not because of what's going to happen in the ring, but just the reality-based promos going into it makes it a fun, interesting matchup. And so uh, the, uh, the the predictable uh, prediction <laughs> is that uh, uh, that uh, Cena and, 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 and uh, Nikki win the match, and then John Cena proposes to her afterwards, and uh, they have a wedding on Total Bellas or something. So th- that seems to be the most predictable prediction. Uh, do you guys have anything else, uh, any other angles possibly on this one? I will throw out... Miz beating John Cena and holding that over the entire roster for the next, you know, three to four months that, you know, that Cena's gone shooting the movie and then he comes back, you know, with a vengeance. (laughs) Or another one could be Maurice goes over uh, Nikki and says, I retired Nikki Bella. And so that's her heat because there's rumors that this is this might be Nikki's last match. Taco. Uh, I'm with you on the, um, I thought I was clever by myself thinking that John Cena was going to propose to her like fucking Miss Elizabeth after his match. But, um, no, I'm with Joe that I, I do want to see Miz and Maurice to win this match, uh, just cause Miz is going to shove it down her throat like AJ Styles did. But, you know, Miz already has a win over Cena at WrestleMania. So that's just going to be his, you know, Undertaker streak. I'm 2-0 against John Cena at WrestleMania. Right on. Then we went to the main event of SmackDown. It was Luke Harper versus Bray Wyatt. Harper says he doesn't need Bray and that he should run as he talks to the light bulbs like their microphones or Wyatt himself. Then we had the match Wyatt versus Harper. Uh, Wyatt does get the win with Sister Abigail after an odd spitting hypnotism of, uh, of, of, of Luke Harper. Harper had some yeah. nice spots in the match. He hit a big drop kick, some big dives onto the floor over the announce yeah. table. Uh, then, uh, uh, after the match, uh, Orton appears on the screen and he has the crucifix, whatever a crucifix is. Maybe I'm late to the party on crucifixes, but, uh, that was the thing that, uh, that, that X f- fake crucifix, I guess that Wyatt had when he cornered Randy in the hallway with all the sheep last week. Maybe it's like a crucifix, but hot topic style. Right. Exactly. So uh, <laughs> Orton's back at the scene of the crime where uh, where he burnt down the uh, the shed, and I was thinking during this whole time, th- this is so stupid, and it's this it's the same you know this dumb skit thing that they're doing. It'd be very fun if a cop just showed up and said, "Oh nope, party's over. You're under arrest for arson." <laughs> Bray Wyatt's in the ring like celebrating or whatever. But uh, no, he shoves the crucifix into the ground, presumably doing something to Sister Abigail. Uh, and I this imagine poor girl, man. I imagine uh, Bray Wyatt's going to come out at WrestleMania, and nothing's going to change. He'll probably be exactly the same. Uh, but since we're on the match. Uh, I'm thinking Randy Orton's going over here. You know, it's been the 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 ever since this is a, this is the story that they have told with these two. They have been feuding forever since September, basically since the beginning of SmackDown. Randy couldn't defeat the Wyatts, so he quote joined the Wyatts. He infiltrated the Wyatts, turned them against each other, burnt down the uh, the, the 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 shed, the castle, the kingdom, whatever you want to call it. Once he was able to get the keys to the kingdom, uh, get Bray's trust. He burns that down. That doesn't work. He's got to go back to the Crucifix thing now. Uh, so the whole story has been about Orton getting finally getting the better of Bray. So I think Orton's winning the title at WrestleMania. Big. That's that, that's the story that they're telling. And then think of the great matches you can have between Orton and AJ possibly after WrestleMania. Taco, where are you at on this one? Predictions. 
Um, I feel like they kind of dropped the ball on SmackDown with Wyatt and Harper. I feel like that should have been like, um, you know, remember when fucking Orton Harper were going after No More Contendership and everyone was geeking out at the possibility of Harper and Wyatt at WrestleMania. I feel like that should have been the WrestleMania match on SmackDown. Obviously wasn't. Uh, but I'm really pulling for Wyatt on this situation. Um, I think he's going to benefit the most out of it. Um, he, you know, yes, he needs to stay consistent. And, um, you know, I, I just want to see the championship on him still. Joe, what do you think? I'm, I'm with Taco. I want to see Wyatt win. I feel like Randy's going to win. But the reason I want Wyatt to win is because, I, like he said, I feel like they've dropped the ball with Wyatt, and I'm not getting that run I wanted. You know how excited I was for Wyatt to get his first title run and be that champion, that he's a champion that doesn't give a fuck about the championship. He just knows he's the best, and he doesn't give a shit. He's going to tear up whatever he wants when he wants because he is the champion, and we're not getting that. We're getting the mystical and yeah, it's Sister the, Abigail. Opposite way, yeah. and, like, to and, me, and that sucks. Go ahead, Taco. <laughs> it, it, it really feels like the Nakamura treatment they're giving him. Like, you know, where it's like you're the champion, but you're not there. It, it, it was kind of, it's kind of disappointing, you know, uh, Tyler on so far. And, you know, that's what he, I, I, I really truly do feel like he's deserving of a longer Tyler reign than what he's given and a better story than what he's given. But at the same time, I kind of do like the story that he, him and Randy Orton has been given too, because I remember back in the day, you know, WrestleMania was that point where all the storylines wrapped up after, you know, a long feud. And we got that with these guys. We have a long story with these two guys and, you know, they're wrapping it up I mean, at WrestleMania. Good. Yeah, it's a, that's the thing is it just has not captivated my imagination or whatever it is. <laughs> Bray doesn't mean anything. Randy means less. He's meant less ever since he got elbowed in the head by Lesnar. This hasn't built him up in any meaningful way in my mind. The fact that he's been able to infiltrate the Wyatts and break them apart, except not really. Wyatt's the same guy. You know, I, I mean, at least Joe, your idea, Wyatt would have some kind of character, but he's just, he's, 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 he doesn't have. Anything. There's nothing there, and I just don't care. This match, for me, is going to be a Titus O'Neil part <laughs> of WrestleMania. I'm just going to want to speed really through it, because I don't be care. I really think you're going to be surprised out of this one. I, I mean, it, I it, certainly, it certainly could be. I mean, they're both great in the ring, but, I mean, just the, the build-up to it just doesn't have me interested, you know? All right, mm-hmm. let's move on. Uh, one more match from SmackDown that didn't get hardly any mention <laughs> on SmackDown. <laughs> right? Ambrose versus Corbin for the Intercontinental Championship. Um, maybe this building didn't have any forklifts in it. That must have been why. Oh, they're playing it safe. <laughs> so, uh, again, another one I don't have a lot of vested interest in. Feels like a Titus O'Neil fast-forward kind of moment. Uh, but th- then again, let's, let's, let's try to spin some positivity out of this one. Ambrose with the bad match with Lesnar last year. I feel like he has something to prove. He's looking for that WrestleMania moment, something that stands out. Corbin, same thing. He's a guy who got called up from NXT. You know, he should want to work hard, prove that he's worthy, prove to the fans that he's worthy, and prove to Ambrose that he's a guy that belongs in this picture, even though, you know, say what you will about the Intercontinental title, but I would like to see that elevated. And so... I, I feel like Corbin should want to prove that he's worthy of being in that IC picture. Uh, I see Ambrose retaining here, but I don't, I, I wouldn't completely put, put it, uh, put, uh, Corbin's chances out of the picture either. So taco, what do you think? Um, it's no secret that I am not the biggest Corbin fan in the world. Baron um, Corbin. <laughs> you know, I, I, I agree with people that, you know, he he has the talent to be a star in the business. It's just to me, it just doesn't strike me right. Um, but, you know, this uh, winning the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania is going to be a great step for him in that direction. Um, when you when you mentioned Ambrose and a WrestleMania moment, um, you're not going to get a WrestleMania moment over Corbin. All right. It's, it's, <laughs> Your WrestleMania moment should have been, you know, when you're with the best, you know, the right. beast incarnate, Brock Lesnar, and we kind of got a fluff match, you know, like, it, that was terrible. That was 
you know, Ambrose's time to have a WrestleMania moment. Not necessarily win over Lesnar, but a moment. And, and I, he didn't even get that. I blame Lesnar on that, too, as we learned in the Stone Cold podcast with Ambrose on it. He, Ambrose wanted to do all this stuff, and Lesnar's like, no, I'm just going to suplex you a bunch of times. So yeah. I, I put that on, on Lesnar. But, Joe, what's your thoughts on Corbin versus Ambrose. I'm actually leaning towards Corbin myself. I think, like Taco said, a win for a title at WrestleMania could give him that push, maybe give him that edge. He's got the in-ring talent. We're just waiting for him to... I mean, the mic skills are really what hurt him. I mean, listening to him talk is like... uh, I don't even even know. I'd even say... In the ring, he was he was definitely brought up too soon. Maybe maybe not too soon, like Nia Jax too soon, Dana Brooke too <laughs> soon, but definitely too soon. For but he's definitely Corbin. gotten a lot more comfortable, especially working with some of the more experienced wrestlers. Again, Ambrose isn't you know he's been around for a little while now. He's got the gist of it, and he's a hard hitting wrestler so he's a good guy to learn from and he's better off script too when he's talking he's good on talking smack when he's just talking when they did that uh oh what the hell was it it was like a documentary thing about nxt from like a year ago uh i can't remember what it was called now it was just on the tip of my brain and now i can't remember it but uh, he was good in that too he came across as a dickish heel type uh so and it was more reality based go ahead taco lucy goosey like that you know yeah yeah, Promos are pretty good, but when he's fucking, you know, uh, grinding against a fucking uh, uh, cage and fucking talking about motorcycles and how he's a badass, I don't give a fuck. You look <laughs> like a bitch to me. Yeah, you're a going glove boxer, but it's just you do nothing. <laughs> That's right. All right, let's get into the raw stuff. Change the subject. Monday Night Raw. <laughs> I gotta tell you guys something. Doing a podcast with no pants on is great. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm turning the video portion of your of the, of the thing off so I don't see oh. that by accident. Oh, don't you worry. <laughs> I'm gonna get. You got to see my face. <laughs> Do not worry. I'm gonna give this a shot right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I feel like Paige right now on my back, looking up at the ceiling. <laughs> So, Monday Night Raw started off with uh, Charlotte uh, saying that uh, Sasha is using Bailey to get back into the title picture. Big, uh, Bailey actually started the, the show, but it was a you know a big promo with all the women coming out to uh, promote the women's match at WrestleMania. Uh, Sasha says, we're going to stay friends, but once we get in the ring, it's business. And when, when it's business, uh, when it comes to business, I'm going to beat Bailey. So I like Sasha saying, yeah, we're going to be friends, but when it, when it comes to us getting in the ring, uh, I'm going to win. Uh, then it uh, what is it uh, ended up being a tag match again holla 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 <laughs> Charlotte and Nia versus Sasha and Bailey <clears throat> Bailey does get the win over Charlotte with the Bailey to Bailey so continuing the the Bailey getting credible wins over Charlotte in non-title situations and whatnot uh, so that continuing but then Nia standing tall after a big brawl attacking everyone at the end of the match. So it is Nia Jax, Charlotte versus Bailey versus Sasha for the women's championship, the Raw Women's Championship, elimination style. I like that they added Mm -hmm. that stipulation Mm -hmm. because it it can tell it it, it can tell a story if they want to. And this is what I want to see as a fan. We've talked about the Bailey story, how when she came in, she's been this underdog scratching and clawing from underneath and, and and whatnot. Um, you know, working her way up. She finally gets the championship match, but it's uh, under, under, she wins under controversy. The stuff with Sasha Banks, the state, the stuff that Charlotte was talking about. So I like the idea that Bailey could possibly get the win here, uh, getting a couple of credible eliminations and getting a clean win. So that's a good story. I like the story that Charlotte's also telling about Sasha and how Sasha could betray Bailey. The Sasha story itself is good. Her saying, we're friends, but I'm going to beat you because I'm better. The Nia thing is the big, uh, the, the elephant in the room, the, the rock in the oatmeal, if you will. She's not ready. She's not good. Uh, she doesn't look the part. And by that, I mean, uh, she, she looks scared when she comes to the ring. Green. She looks like she doesn't know what she's doing. Yes, she's very green. So, all that being said, predictions, Taco. Predictions. I mean, keep throwing to Taco first. Fuck that. We're going to go to Joe first. What are you doing? Yeah, fuck <laughs> you, Taco. <laughs> uh, I say we, uh, one, I'm going to throw out one. Pick pick who you're gonna, your final two are going to be. Think about that. Ooh. And then who's going to win. My final two, 
are going to be Sasha and Bailey going the way of not even shenanigans, but just that Sasha with a good solid win over Bailey and then just rubbing it in her face, making that small little turn and being the boss, you know. Does she make the small turn where they shake, where she's where she's heelish in the match, but they shake hands afterwards, or does she go full on turn where the crowd is booing her after the match? I say go small turn, and then it turns it turns nasty after WrestleMania with the right move, you know, just that okay. one first move on Raw. And I missed it. Did you say you have Sasha winning? Sasha re- winning Sasha! over ba- over Bailey. <laughs> Taco, what do you got? Um, you guys didn't hear the news about Nia Jax at all. She I'm went so- to the hospital after Raw. I did not hear about that. Yeah, she was feeling green. <laughs> <laughs> did you know that Nia Jax is so green? Come with the fog, gave her a cup of tea to sip on. That's none of my business, though. <laughs> That's not what this show's about. <laughs> Nia Jax is so green. Doink the clown was asking her where she gets her hair done. <laughs> That's right, geeks. <laughs> How you doing? I am How you doing? <laughs> we had enough of you talking that flim flam. <laughs> Shadow! Uh, Nia Jax is so green, her ring name was almost Mean Green Ogreland. <laughs> <laughs> Taco, right, what's right. your prediction? <laughs> that Nia Jax is so green, she lives in a greenhouse. Um, I like that it's an elimination chamber match because um, it, it gives that opportunity for the three women to gain up, gain up on uh, Nia Jax and uh, eliminate her. Um, yes, but um. Um, I, you know, the, the big consensus right now is that, um, you know, uh, S- Sasha is going to turn on Bailey. Um, but I, I really do feel like it's going to be Bailey pinning Sasha, Sasha getting pissed off and costing her the match for Charlotte to w- win the women's championship. Starting a Bailey Sasha feud. So you think Bailey's going to eliminate Sasha, but then Charlotte gets the win. Did you know that Nia Jax is so green that during this year's presidential election, 2% of the American public wrote Nia Jax in for the Green Party? <laughs> Too sweet, me, Hootski. All right, my prediction, yeah. Uh, like I said, I like the Bailey story. Uh, I like I, I like all the stories except the Nia one. Uh, I also think that uh, the, the, the thing that you brought up, Joe, the two that it comes down to, uh, that's a tough one. I, I, I Right? Uh, I like what Taco said where, where Bailey eliminates – Sasha, uh, but then again, the story is that Sasha uh, is, is is manipulating Bailey so she can get back at Charlotte and win the title from Charlotte, or, or win the or win the, or not not to win the title from Charlotte, but just to win the title because Charlotte eliminated Sasha from the title picture by beating her at Roadblock end of the year, <laughs> or whatever. I, I I honestly really feel like not. Uh, <clears throat> This next pay per view will probably be a rematch for the championship. You know, if, if my prediction is right, but I f- really do feel like we're going to be seeing a Charlotte and um, uh, fucking what's her face, um, Arnold Classic Broad. Oh, Dana Brooke, yeah, Dana Brooke. We're going to be seeing a feud between that, and you know, f- I just have this stupid fucking feeling that it's going to be you know with the championship on the line. Like I helped you so many times, keep that, and blah 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 blah. And, you know, it's going to be the greatest school right at WrestleMania. <laughs> well, Dana Brooke is women's champion. Well, I'll get to Dana Brooke in a second here, but I, the fan in me wants to see Bailey get the credible win and keep the championship. That's what I, I want. want. that, too. But, That's what I want. But I think, I think it's going to go back to Charlotte in something similar to what Taco said. I think Sasha eliminates Bailey with the heel turn situation, and then it comes down to Sasha and Charlotte, and Charlotte either wins outright or via some... Possibly Dana Brooke shenanigans, although they broke up. So uh, it could possibly be some uh, some um, Emma shenanigans. Now that Dana Brooke mm. and Charlotte have broken up, Dana Brooke could go back to Emma, who she originally started with. And since this is a four-way match, this match, anything goes. So uh, Emma coming out and uh, interfering with Charlotte could lead to Sasha getting the victory, or or. Po- it could lead to Sasha getting the victory, which kind of fucks up my prediction. But I, th- I actually think Charlotte will win mm-hmm. here. That's what I think. That think that. Charlotte is the is the ace of the women's division right now. She stands out to me as the best performer. She looks the best in the ring, even though she's a little less experienced than a lot of other ones. She just looks great at the top of the uh, of the raw re- women's roster. Go ahead, Taco. 
I've said it on a podcast or a podcast before too that I, you know I really do feel like that they're building up her women's record to be you know kind of near her dad's not to that extent but you know something high up there where it's like she's an eight time or ten time right champion. and this would be like also that, um, the fifth that night that, that Becky Lynch thinks she's a good luck charm <laughs> all right I'm moving on <laughs> um, <laughs> other than uh, no that's all I think I wanted to say on that she's one. so great she gets to defeat Superman. <laughs> we had uh, Ares versus Noam Dar on the show. Ares busting out the Lance ch- last chancery to get a win. Later on the show, Neville took on Jack Gallagher in a, a rematch from earlier in the year. Uh, good, better match for, with Neville and Gallagher. Definitely. There. And uh, Neville getting a win with the Rings of Saturn. So I like both guys displaying submission holds, uh, getting that over. So this one's going to be uh, Neville versus uh, Ares. I heard this one's on the pre-show as well. Yes. So uh, yeah. not getting the, the the main show love that a lot of us wanted to see. But this one has a chance to uh, be a good match and steal the show. I like Neville on commentary going the opposite way with it. Like, no, I'm going to beat this dude quick. It's not going to be anything like you think it will be. I'm just going to whip his ass. So that was an interesting little uh, throw in there. Uh, but I think uh, – I, I, I think Aries gets it here. Aries has really gotten himself over. He was great on commentary. He's been great in the ring since he com- since he came back, and I think that tells a fun story. And a g- it'll be a great pre-show match. Joe, what is your prediction? Predictions. I actually agree. I like Austin Aries getting the belt because I think that guy could carry the cruiserweight division for a little while, just holding the belt for a month or two. Get the get these yes. challenges. You know, really bring up two hundred five live because I mean, I mean, did you guys see? Austin Aries package. <laughs> it was a it was a phenomenal package. <laughs> not as good, not as good as Seth Rollins. <laughs> Taco, what is your? Um, you know, I I, I want to see this on a uh, uh, a triple. He has that extra A for that ass. <laughs> but um, <laughs> a little shout I, out I, to I, the Attitude of Aggression podcast there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do want to see the the championship on him though because you know he, that dude's paid his fucking dues. He's been in and out of the fucking wrestling business, like you know, just across the businesses wise. Um, but and he's so over right now on WWE TV, not NXT TV, and just seeing the crowd pop for him is so fucking awesome. But at the same time, Neville has been doing tremendous things since he's been champion. Yeah, I don't want to and, take anything away from Neville here either. He's been he's been great, really good champion. You know the the king of the cruiserweight stuff gets, gets on me a little bit, but uh, he's been good well, as a heel. Go ahead, Taco. Like Joe said that um you know he feels that Austin Aries could carry the whole uh, cruiserweights on his back. I feel like he could carry the whole uh, Raw on his back if you know if they gave him the chance. Um, they're not going to do that though. To me. Um, I, yeah. I feel like Neville's going to retain the championship here because he has been doing a great job, and you know uh, this isn't going to be the end of the feud. All right, then it was the hold harmless contract signing. Uh, really good uh, heel, rich, arrogant <laughs> boss Triple H. Oh, his face with, for the cheap Philly pop with Seth Rollins. Just he just <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> and Rollins was good here too. Now for me, this was not the breakout promo that I was looking for from Seth Rollins, but it was good here. Mm-hmm. I, I liked him just standing up and and you know not uh, not taking any shit from from. Uh, from Triple H, they get into the brawl. Triple H kicks the uh, the table into him, but uh, Rollins does stand tall but gimpy uh, at the end of it. So I like Rollins getting one over there on Triple H going into Mania. It kind of screws around with the typical WWE psychology because Rollins is kind of the favorite going into this one. But uh, uh, Taco, what is your prediction for Triple H versus Seth Rollins WrestleMania? <laughs> I think at WrestleMania, the greatest thrill ride that Nia Jax is so green she gets her energy from photosynthesis. <laughs> it's a plant hey, that's fuck. funny. You think that's funny? It's not. <laughs> no, I, I, the promos were on point with this. Triple H, you know, a lot of people give him shit. A lot of people give him guff. But, you know, the, the dude does work in the ring. He does work on the mic. You know, he's, you know, top. He's top up there. You know, he's, he's great. Um, Rollins really needs to win this match, though. Joe, what do you say? Agreed. I think Rollins, not, Triple H. I mean, he's far from removed from being a full time actual, you know, wrestler performer. He'll always have that on his contract. But 
Rollins needs the win to build up going into the next year. Hopefully, if he doesn't hurt himself at the match, you know it is unsanctioned, guys. That's could get, true. It could get a little rough. But yeah, here's one thing. Rollins. Cool. Go, Go ahead, Tiger. Here's one thing I'm really fucking looking forward to is Triple H's entrance because um, those are always good. Uh, <laughs> I, I, they're always good, but you know I, I'm. You know, I agree with Triple H that fucking Motorhead is one of the greatest fucking bands to walk this fucking earth. Rest in peace, Lemmy. So I feel like Triple H is going to do something really special for Lemmy this year. Right on. Yeah, that's something something I didn't think about. Uh, Another point here is, do we know is a hold harmless match, a a unsanctioned match, is that one? This match! Anything goes! (laughs) Because there's a big possibility for a lot of smoke and mirrors in this deal. We've got the Samoa Joe Fact. There's no Samoa Joe. Right, Samoa Joe not booked anywhere on the card. So there's the Samoa Joe factor. There's the Kevin Owens factor, who's been you know linked up with Samoa Joe now and Triple H, obviously because of the Universal Championship situation. Then there's the question of where does Finn Balor fit into yep. all of this? Mm-hmm. Finn Balor is on the road working house shows now in six man tags against Triple H. But you could tell a story of Finn also being Triple H's guy. Now, personally, I don't think we'll see Finn at WrestleMania. I feel like that is going to be one of the big surprises for Monday after WrestleMania. Yep. You know, I just watched today that uh, that 24 documentary on the Monday after WrestleMania, and that was one of the big it. that was one of the big points in that documentary was. You know, they save big surprises for that Monday after because that crowd is just going nuts the whole time. If it's not mm-hmm. something good, they're going to enter- start entertaining themselves. Remember last year it was Cesaro making his big return, so that was a big thing. And and, and also, we kept, we've talked about a lot how a lot of these WrestleMania matches don't interest us as far as in-ring quality go. Uh, and I'm right in the boat with that with this Triple H-Seth Rollins match just because, yes, yeah, Seth Rollins is great, but he's going to be selling the knee the whole time. Hard. And, and, you know, Triple H, is he's an old guy. He's not going to be running around there like crazy, so it's going to be that slow heel pace, grabbing the, the, the sledgehammer, the guys coming out, the smoke and mirrors. So it's going to mm-hmm. be a lot of that, not an in-ring classic, but they tend to deliver on that in-ring stuff, that really those really good mm-hmm. matches on the Monday after WrestleMania. So I'm really looking forward to the Monday and the surprises, what you know, what happens with NXT, guys maybe coming up. So and that was another thing that they they showcased on that thing. It was Enzo and Cass's debut on the main mm-hmm. roster from uh, from NXT last year. So I, it's hard to believe it feels like it's been wow. over a year since Enzo and Cass came up. But this is Enzo and Cass's first WrestleMania. This will be the first time we get to see yep. that entrance on the big stage. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be huge. Yeah. Uh, m- my big thing with the, the triple H Ron's match though, is um, with that knee though, it, like you said, triple H is going to be doing the more maniacal sledgehammer, almost Randy Orton esque working of the limbs, slowly fucking just beating him down to a fucking pulp. Yeah. But you know, that, that eliminates Rollins from doing the, the face moves, the high spots, the high flying, the big kicks, the super spots. So, right. And it, we we know he has the talent to put on a fucking great wrestling match without those. So it's uh, I'm really looking forward to this match. Yeah, I think it's going to be fun either way. Even though it won't be the Matt Classic that we're that we're think, that we're hoping for or whatever from some of these other matches, I still think it will be good. My prediction. God, you know, I, I, I want to go with Triple H just because there's going to be so much smoke and mirrors. The deck is so stacked, but you, you're right. Rollins needs the win. Um, and you could tell the story, Triple H beating him down so hard, getting the win, and then Rollins going away after Mania if he really is hurt. But I don't think they would be doing this match if he wasn't ready to be back. No. So I really think it's got to be Rollins in this one. Joe, you got anything different? Nope, I got Rollins. I, I think you already prediction. actually asked me, didn't you? I don't know if I did or not. <laughs> well, you know what? No, you know no. what? I'm going with Triple H now. <laughs> All right, fine. Go ahead and change it up on me. Uh, Wait, Joe, please say it like Regal. <laughs> yeah, Triple H. That's the way Triple we say H. it. H. H. Then we had H. the the uh, the Roman versus, uh, or not versus, but the Roman uh, Undertaker thing. Uh, Dude. Undertaker <laughs> likes to dig graves wearing uh, MMA gloves, apparently. Uh, but okay, okay, so I actually... I really liked this, uh, minus the, the Hocus Pocus stuff. I liked Roman specifically in this. He says, 
I'm a grown man. I'm not buying any of this crap. You know, the dead man, you know. <laughs> and so I liked him saying that. I, li- I like him saying, I don't believe in dead men. Uh, whatever. I'm going to take, I'm, and, and him just getting that heat from the crowd. Like, mm-hmm. I'm taking out, I'm putting the Undertaker down. This is my, right. having that attitude, that swagger. This is my yard. So this was very heelish from, from Roman Reigns. It could have been more heelish once the Undertaker was out there, but he was just kind of standing there staring at him. Uh, um, Undertaker was okay. It was, it was who the Undertaker is nowadays. I don't know. Taco, what are your thoughts? Um, I agree 100% with you that Reigns' promo on Raw was fucking fantastic. Uh, my favorite line that he spit it out was, um, oh, last time I was in the city, I won the Royal Rumble. <laughs> and, then I to the ma- and then I went on to the main event of WrestleMania so, twice. So that much was heat. so fucking heelish. And the look on his face and the crowd booing, I was like, yes, yeah. it's happening. Yeah, and the so, crowd was all in on boo- like, the Like, it wasn't like... I mean, and granted, this wasn't like the big heel turn moment. It was, it was more subtle than that. But <laughs> it's that you, subtle heat that's good, though. It's right, that right. Subtleness. And that's and that's what I loved about it too. That the crowd, there wasn't anybody in the crowd being like too smart about it. Like, going, yes, he's being a bad guy. <laughs> you know, everybody was like, "Boo, you fucking suck." And so that's what I loved about it too, Joe. Yeah, no, he was. He was using the right fucking set of words just to get under everyone's fucking skin, and it was just like, <laughs> yeah, I loved it, dude, and. uh uh, I, I don't, are we doing predictions right now? Yeah, go for it. Go for it, man. Uh, um, I honestly, since Brock Lesnar beat Taker, the fucking streak and Taker at WrestleMania means shit now. Um, <laughs> Reigns really needs to win this one. Taco, what do you say? Or uh, Joe, I'm sorry. <laughs> you son. Been a of long time bitch. since I fucked up your name. You got to go back right? all the way oh. back to like episode 26 or yeah, something. Yeah, was back in the day when I was John. <laughs> 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 um, I. Everyone wants to see Undertaker win, but like you guys said, he needs this win, and we want him to get this win in that sense that it's going to push gets booed. that right, <laughs> right over. And like I said, so much heat. And if it's Roman the same wins. thing. Like if Brock technically won, everyone says it. Like if Roman beats him, you know, the stadium's going to get torn to shreds and everything. No, it's not. <laughs> People will be fine. Let's all relax, but let Roman Reigns win. I mean,. What has Undertaker got to lose at this point? I never thought I would believe I would be hearing pe- uh, smart marks on a podcast saying, let <laughs> Roman Reigns win against The Undertaker. But that's how we it's, feel. That's, it's, it's so, much, it's so right right now. It's so mu- and hey, because, guys. Hey, guys. And it's for the, oh, okay. The taco's going off. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> But it's it's such it's such the right move because it's gonna get him so much heat, oh, so, so it, just nuclear heat. So yeah, fucking. Do you think that guy that was at the Brock Lesnar Undertaker match, the surprise guy, is gonna be at this one? <laughs> and he'll be out there booing with all the rest of them. Oh, it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be it'll be it'll be out of this world. As far as match quality, again. Uh, not going to be a great match, but it'll be fun. I think the the near falls will be fun. It, it it'll be something to it'll be it'll won't be, be a spectacle. won't be match of the night, but it at least give us more than Triple H technically Seth Rollins in a match. Well, and have you seen this entrance ramp that they have built? It's it comes from the top of the first deck all the way down to the ring. So in between the first and second deck is where the ramp starts. So it's literally going to take about a half hour for the Undertaker to get to the ring. <laughs> so well, and there's there's talks of like a roller coaster for the entrance. <laughs> Possibly like some form of thing. Sure, I just see a roller coaster accident happening. The greatest thrill ride of them all. At the, of course, they would put up a roller coaster. Uh, yeah. Did you guys know that Nia Jax is so green? She wants so Christmas. <laughs> Enzo and Cass took on Anderson and Gallows. There was no match. Cesaro and Sheamus came out and attacked Anderson and Gallows with a ladder because earlier in the show, Anderson and Gallows attacked uh, Cesaro and Sheamus with a ladder in the match. And then, not on Raw, but sometime after Raw, they put it out there that, yes, this will it's be a ladder, a ladder match at Wrestle. Mania. So it will be, uh, what did I say? Enzo and Cass in their first WrestleMania match versus Anderson and Gallows and Cesaro and Sheamus. Joe, what's your prediction for this one? I really like Cesaro and Sheamus taking the titles back at WrestleMania. I love that team. They've got the build. And I think the chemistry on camera has gotten better and better every week with how they are. I, I like them taking the titles back. Also, did you see that gash that Sheamus got on Raw? 15 stitches on the on the forehead. Wow, I did not I didn't see that one. What was that? 
Uh, when he came out and attacked, I'm guessing with the ladder. Oh, okay. But like, yeah, he le- he left with a huge gash on his head with 50 gash. stitches. Nice. All right, Taco, what do you got for this one? Your beer's making me jealous, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's like my fucking sixth one and some whiskey. Oh, work's going to be fun tomorrow. I got school. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a goddamn college student. Right? <laughs> um. But uh, so we had a uh, club Enzo Cass and Cesaro. Yeah. Uh, orig- originally, I was uh, kind of leaning towards the club winning it when it was just a triple threat match. But now that the ladder's been introduced, um, way better than my idea of throwing it in with the women. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how just over my head, but yeah, um, I actually like it a lot that the ladder is being introduced in this match because it's been you know since Hardy Dudley E and C days since we had a fucking triple threat ladder match at WrestleMania, so it's kind of like a good uh, you know nod to the f- uh, back day or to those days. Excuse me, definitely. And I think, and I think this um, you know kind of height heightens the chances of Enzo and Cass winning the championships. Yeah, I'm with you. That's my prediction is Enzo and Cass. You know, they came in a year ago, like I said, Monday Night Raw debuted the Monday after WrestleMania, uh, and they've been great all year. They've gotten over, they've stayed over, and they haven't had a championship yet, and I think this is their time. You know, I've, I've complained about, you know, them playing the entrance on TV too much, and maybe they'll dial it back now a little bit if they put the championships on them. Now oh, they're going to pump that shit to 11. <laughs> now that they've been around <laughs> for a year, but it's going to be awesome. That's going to, it's going to be awesome to see that entrance at WrestleMania. I, it'll be fun to see if they maybe do something special for their WrestleMania entrance, their first WrestleMania, because think about it, Enzo and Cass are kind of students of the Triple H system, and so Triple H likes to do them elaborate, awesome WrestleMania uh, 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 entrances, so I, I, I think that there's a possibility of something cool here, I think. Uh, but yeah, I think Enzo and Cass finally get the uh, the championships here. Personally, oh. I, I want uh, the club to win it, though. I want to see them retain. I want to see Cesaro Sheamus, so I'm with Joe on that as far as the in my heart of hearts. But in this ladder match, I like what you said, Taco, about how we haven't had that three-way tag team ladder match thing in quite a while. It's been these you know seven, eight-man things for like the IC or U.S. title mm-hmm. the last few years. So I like that aspect. I think Sheamus and Cesaro are going to look really awesome in this match. Um, and it'll give Enzo and Cass a, a, a chance to, at a, in a big spot like this to really, you know, step up their game and, and, and show what they've got. So. Now, was there any real reasoning for making this a ladder match? Because I'm just throwing this out there. Very unlikely, but just like how Ring of Honor technically did with Young Bucks saying challenging the Hardys to a ladder match, or they just kind of leaning putting this ladder match in here for a reason to pull out the broken hardies for some reason just as a nod <laughs> well there's that and, and, very very unlikely i'm not even like i, I, I mean i hope well I would again love to see that the but. monday after wrestlemania i think is a bigger possibility to see the broken heart either the way either way i'm happy but i'm just you know well, it's fun and actually <laughs> i think uh raw gave more of a reason for the ladder match because Anderson and Gallows. I actually really like how they did this. They they just mm-hmm. uh, ended up attacking Cesaro and Sheamus in the back, and then there happened to be ladders like on a rack over there, you know, off to the side. So they grabbed ladders because they were there and attacked him with it. They weren't like obviously set up like you know leaning up against a ladder or whatever. So it was a little more subtle than that. So I like that they set that up. Whereas with Ring of Honor, the Young Bucks just came out and challenged uh, the, uh, the the Hardys to a ladder match. So they. Actually, gave a little bit more of a reason here, Taco. It sounded like you had something to add there. Um, Joe, Joe, pointing out the the Young Bucks and the Hardys thing is, um, if the Hardys do come to the WWE, uh, let's say Enzo and Cass win the championships, I don't want to see that match. I do not want to see Hardys against Enzo and Cass. I, I don't. They're doing this, you know, world tour, being the best tag team ever. Um, Enzo and Cass are far from that. Right, I, and, and yet, I feel like Hardys and um, Gallus and Anderson. Now that's a fucking match right there. I think the the Hardys are going more. I mean, think about it. The New Day have nothing to do right now. They are hosting WrestleMania. So night after WrestleMania, out come the New Day. Out come the Hardys. I think that's that's a good program for the for the Hardys. Joe, you brought up you wanted to see the Hardys versus Bray Wyatt. <laughs> 
Wait, which one are you talking about? The uh, the NXT one. Oh, I just because of the jaw jacking uh, all over Twitter and everything. I want to see Hard- Hardys versus the Revival. Yeah. So yeah, th- those would be some, some good matches for the the Hardys. Could be in. a surprise for both, you know. But I agree with you, Taco. That Enzo and Cass are a little too green, and the Hardys are too old. So that combination doesn't make for a good matchup. But you put the Hardys in with the Young Bucks, with. Uh, the, the, the the New Day, Revival, guys that are younger and are in their prime that can create the movement well, around the Hardys. It's it's not necessarily that. It's just you, you look at the teams that the Hardys are facing right now, and they're established teams. They've right. been around for a long time. Enzo and Cass have been together. Yeah, they grew up together. Yeah, they're homeboys. Yeah, they probably ran a train on some bitches, but <laughs> they, they're just an NXT tag team. Hi. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying though it's just like a lot of these teams that the the hardys are beating are well established teams um yeah enzo and Cass are established team but they're not like you know the team to be they're not like the dudley boys or you know um well even in uh um god i'm gonna bring up uh impact yes i said the right name but uh, abyss and who's the other fuck he was tag team with oh uh crazy, crazy steve, steve. <laughs> crazy steve but, you know, they've been men there for a while, you know? So, I don't know. I'm sad I knew that. Kevin Owens says uh, uh, that Jericho was right for making fun of me being a Jericho-holic when I was a kid and making my parents spend money on Jericho merchandise. That was a fun line. Uh, but then saying that uh, Jericho saying, I, I grew up and I'm not stupid anymore. Uh, so I like the, the promo going into that. I like him saying he was excited to, to kill Sami Zayn's career in the match that he had with Sami Zayn. That's the part of the th- uh, whole setup that I really liked too is because, again, Kevin Owens is a prize fighter. It gave him something to fight for in the match, even though there's not a championship. Right on. And then in the match, Zayn wins with the most devastating move in professional wrestling, the roll-up, after getting distracted by the Samoa Joe and Jericho. Jericho shenanigans at ringside. So it's going to be Kevin Owens versus Jericho. Another dark horse match for match of the show, possibly, uh, for the United States Championship. Joe, what do you got on this one? <laughs> it, this is tough because Jer- it sounds like Jericho could stick around for just a little while, but... <sighs> No, motherfucker, he's going on tour with Fozzie. Is he going on tour with Fozzie, <laughs> Taco? Is he really going on tour? <laughs> I'm going to point out that Tommy left. I think he went to go get beer. <laughs> <laughs> he's been craving that beer. <laughs> oh, he's got it. He's got it. Nice, uh, nice. I already forgot what match we're predicting. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go get a beer. I ran out of I water. I think Tommy's right. I need to do this podcast drunk every week. <laughs> Just bring a sixer with you every week. Hey, man, you got no, a designated I, I, driver. I, I, at first, I was pretty drunk when we were doing this podcast. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I could tell. So Jericho Owens, U.S. Ah, title. There we go. There we go. Joe got completely distracted when I got up and oh, left the, the podcast. He's just, like, it's all in my hands. I what am I going to do? What do I do? I'm panicking. <laughs> um, I. It's a tough pick, but I actually, you know, Kevin Owens is going to take that title from him. And we're. I think this... This or Neville versus Austin Aries is going to be match of the night. Is my prediction. Yeah. One of those two. I'm with you. Uh, I think. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, uh, KO getting the U.S. title all the way because KO Mania. as we've been predicting for almost a year now, the show's been o- uh, on for back on with the three of us for almost a year, and we've been saying it almost <laughs> since the beginning that Jericho is destined to leave any moment <laughs> to go on tour with Fozzy, and it is reported that Jericho is touring with Fozzy in the month of May. So, okay. or, in the, or, or is it May or April? I think it's May, actually. So uh, <laughs> he will be leaving soon, and I do believe that Jericho will get, or uh, Kevin Owens will get the U.S. the U.S. title. Taco, any other thoughts on this one? Any any contradictions? Uh, Nia Jax is so, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, Kevin Owens winning this one. It just makes most sense, and uh, asking me a hell of a match. All right, then we got the big main event. Goldberg versus Lesnar, United or Universal title on the line. Heyman and Lesnar were pretty over in Philadelphia on Monday. Uh, mm-hmm. Goldberg comes out, spears Lesnar on the floor, holds up the title. So again, uh, a, a what a brawl <laughs> on, <laughs> on Monday. Are we going to get a thirty-second match at Mania to close out the show? What do you think, Taco? Um, that Nia Jax is so green. Her indie name was the Great Gazoo. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I got it, Taco. 
Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, I yeah, certainly. That's what she's about. <laughs> I certainly hope we don't see a quick match. Um, it, it, it's nice seeing Lesnar thrown around. It definitely is because you know he he just it it humanizes him in a sense. Sure. Um, it, this honestly is one of the toughest calls because yeah. nobody really knows if uh, Goldberg has his contract signed after WrestleMania. How long that is. So uh, that's great. You know, we need that. There's too much on the dirt sheets nowadays. Uh, just look at the whole fucking card of WrestleMania. We knew that in fucking December. But um, I, I'm really leaning towards uh, Lesnar on this one. Um, yeah, he just needs to retain. And um, I just it, it's just such a weird fucking thing because it's like if either either of them win – where do you go from this? <laughs> That's a good one. Because, yeah, if if Lesnar wins, he's not around all the time. Goldberg can't work very long matches. So And it, then, and and if he wins, he's burying all of your other top guys like Kevin Owens. So it's, it's interesting. But the, it, there are rumors out there that Goldberg is interested in doing more. Uh, WWE's making money with him, uh, getting mm-hmm. interest in the product. So, well, it's, it's, it's nice. You got to look, too, you know, since his... Um, uh, return. It's been about six months now, so it's just like if you're not ring ready by now, because that knowledge is in the back of your head. It's just bring it out to the front of your head in a you know weird fucking drunken statement. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know, you know what I'm saying though. It's just like um, if you haven't sharpened your uh, ring rust by now, um, you need to get the fuck out. Yeah, Taco, I'm with you. I think uh, I think it's got to be a little bit longer of a match. Goldberg's got to show that he belongs. I, I'm with you as well. I think Lesnar gets the win here. That's the story they've told. That uh, uh, Goldberg has, been, has had Lesnar's number, and this is the what third match or whatever. Or uh, and, and the, every time they've encountered each other, gotten physical, Goldberg has gotten the better. So and like and like you said earlier too, with the the Lesnar and um, uh, Ambrose match, uh, Lesnar just wasn't feeling it and. You know, at the same time, I, I can see why he wouldn't. It's yeah. Dean Ambrose. Um, I like Dean Ambrose, but at the same time, he's just uh, a good version of Roman Reigns to me. Sure. Um, but, um, you know, at the same time, I feel like Lesnar is actually putting more um, thought and emotion into this feud with Goldberg because they do have that uh, shitty, was it WrestleMania 22? Sure, they might want to have some redemption. For that. They, they, they have that, uh, you know, not necessarily shitty match, but by far not a good match. Right, and all the heat um, that so they had, too. It, it's, uh, Goldberg's kind of got something going to prove to. because of that, so... Mm-hmm. It, it, it's kind of what I was going to with the Randy Orton Wyatt feud is, you know, um, WrestleMania, you know, back in the day was that event where you wrapped up the feuds after they've been going on for six months to a year. Uh, so it, 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 at the same time, you know, we're looking at this on paper that's like, oh, it's just kind of a uh, WrestleMania. But, you know, look how long the Triple H and Rollins feud has been going on for the um, Owens. Well, Owens and Jericho, even you know, it's yep. been a build up to that feud. Uh, Wyatt and Orton, it's been a build up to that feud, and uh, Lesnar and uh, Goldberg, it's been it's been constant build up for months upon months. So, um, you know, it's kind of exciting at the same time that you know they're kind of doing this kind of stuff. Joe, your thoughts on this one? I disagree in the fact that, especially with last Monday, he's already been humanized with the match. I'm already, you know, like doubting, you know, technically Goldberg's got his number. I didn't need that spear on Raw. I, w- I would rather have seen Brock actually pull something off. So I, I, I have something to base it off, like monster versus monster. At this point, like you said, we're just expecting another minute-long match, whether it be Lesnar or Goldberg. It's not going to be – I'm not excited for this <laughs> at all. And I'm, that- I love Brock Lesnar. Shut up, Taco. I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> But so I'm just I'm really mad that they they've dropped Rock so hard. I mean he doesn't care. He's making money no, nonetheless. But I I want to see something more. And I think actually the longer the match goes on, the better it is for Goldberg because they're letting him go that long. Yeah, I like I said, I think both guys have something to prove, and I I think I think Lesnar is the right move here, putting mm-hmm. the title back on him and then if, if Goldberg wants to do more come on back and, and make some special challenges but him as the top guy being the champion I, I just don't feel like it's 
I, I feel like it's run its course, and I mean, he's really going to have to pr- if he if Goldberg retains but doesn't prove himself in the match, that's a huge mistake. So that's what makes this interesting to me, because if it is a long match, the longer the match goes to me, the more likely it might be that Goldberg actually wins, because then he will have proven himself to the the wrestling fans, you know, the, the WrestleMania crowd, mm-hmm. the uh, the fans in general. He Hi. proved that he can go in that WrestleMania main event. So it'll be very interesting to see. I'm, I, I, yeah, I'm, fuck it. You know what? I'm and I'll be hype as a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, let's change the subject and hold get it. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Go ahead, Taco. I, I just, I, kind of, um, I, I kind of sick of the statement of, um, you know, Brock Lesnar is only in this business for the money. No, he's not. He has plenty of fucking money. Like, you know how much money he made from UFC 200? It's like, right. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid how much this dude has in money. Like, if he did not want to wrestle, he wouldn't be wrestling right now. Right, exactly. He's, he, he's walked he's, out before. He's got plenty of money. If he didn't if he didn't like what he was doing, he wouldn't be doing it. Stop disagreeing so, with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, so, yeah, this is, you know, oddly enough, it's like, it's like, the least wanted match, but at the same time, like it's the most curious match on the card at the greatest thrill ride WrestleMania because there's so many possibilities right now. It's because like we just don't know what the fuck is going to happen with these two. We have that thirty second spree, or we can have a fucking twenty minute long Iron, you know, not Iron Man match, but a fucking twenty minute match. We just don't know, and that's what this business is based around. And Intrigue, see yeah, that again. intrigue and spectacle. So mm-hmm. I'm very. That's int- the only match on the card that we have that with. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm I'm intrigued and and interested in the spectacle of of quite a few matches actually. Oh no, so, for sure. But and it's just, just the you spectacle know, of WrestleMania. So, but you know, it's just like you look at Lesnar and Goldberg. Like I said, it's like where do you go from there? And then you look at you know Goldberg's contract. Uh, where does he go from there? It's just. God, there's just so many factors in this match. It's just like it's something I want to look forward to, but on paper, it's like I don't look forward to it. All right, the subject. Let's get into our NXT Takeover Orlando predictions. Uh, it'll be interesting to see because they've only announced four matches for the show so far. So awesome. this week's uh, uh, NXT show on Wednesday. Uh, as you're li- probably listening to this on Wednesday, it'll be interesting to see what else that we get out of it because there's potential for uh, another Ty Eric Young match. We've got the uh, the uh, Ruby Riot who just debuted on last last week's mm-hmm. show. Possibility for a match between I think her and Nikki Cross. Did, I think they did announce uh, No Way Jose Roderick Strong and Ty versus Sanity. I thought for. Well, that was I didn't see anything yet. That was the match last week. It was, ended in a no contest: Sanity versus Strong, Jose and Ty. So they could announce a rematch of that this week. They could do a, a mixed tag style one where where Cross is in on one side and Ruby Riots on the other. So there's possibilities so. here. So yeah, I gotta say I love the fucking name Ruby Riot though. Yeah, yeah, uh, and they're they're baking off that Ruby Rose broad though because she kind of has the same haircut, tattoos, <laughs> kind of. You know, no offense, but a uh, uh, dikey tough chick gimmick. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, she's got a good look, and it'll be a fun fit so. in NXT. So, and we're get, we got more fun stuff coming up from that women's side too. We'll have that women's tournament. I believe it's going to be in May. So, so oh, really? uh, signed for the, it's either, yeah, I think it's, I think they're saying May now for the women's tournament. So nice. stay cool. tuned for that. Awesome. So officially signed at the time of this recording for NXT TakeOver Orlando, the debuting Alistair Black taking on Andrade Cien Almas. I really like Almas Ooh. lately doing the Tranquilo. I wanted to see him bring in Los Ingobernables USA. I think that would be awesome. I don't think we'll see it. <laughs> yeah, but I would. Uh, I think uh, Alistair Black probably gets the win in his debut. Taco, what do you think? Yeah, this honestly, this match is the biggest disappointment to me because there's so many other talent that you could put Alistair Black against right now. Uh, and you're putting him against Almas, who's on such a great fucking run right now, finally, you know, digging his feet into the NXT roots, and it's they're going to take that all away from him again. 
Yep. I mean, it is predictable to give Alistair the first win here, but then Andrade could get his heat back right after the match, attack him, maybe have a buddy come out, another member of Los Ingobernables USA. You know, maybe mm. something like that, or maybe maybe that's that'd be great. Maybe, maybe that gets almost the win, get and so that has heat with Alistair, and so he they challenge a rematch, get into a whole thing. So mm. there's possibilities here. I'm I'm really ruined for Almas on this one though. Um kind of to throw to throw a, a match out there for everyone to watch on YouTube it's very shitty quality but it's um um god what the fuck <laughs> it's almost against uh, Nakamura in a 2 out of 3 falls match for the IWGP Intercontinental Championship and holy fuck dude great match is that a CMLL match then it was a CML match, yes. So, and, um, okay. So it, it was really fun to see the, the Mexican crowd just going fucking nuts for Almas, you know, getting the pinfall. La them, Sombra. Disappointed. La Sombra, that's right. And them just super disappointed when Nakamura got the pinfall. Nice. So everyone go out, watch that fucking match. It was a great match, and it's going to definitely give you a whole new respect for Almas, even Nakamura. Because, you know, it's just that crowd was fucking great. And, you know, the, the Mexican crowd, they love that sport. So, yeah, check that out. So, you know, that's why it's kind of disappointing to me because um, I'm not too familiar with, um, I don't know his name on the Indies right now, uh, Blacks. Uh, oh, but, Black uh, or Tommy End. Tommy End, yep. Tommy End, there we go. Thank you. Um, but, um, you know, the only really thing I really saw of him was that match against um, uh, Neville. And the the cruise, not the cruise weight classic, the UK uh, tournament. Oh yeah, that's right. And mm-hmm. and, and, I um, about that. <laughs> and he wasn't he wasn't uh, Alistair Black either. So. Right, right. It's because they're over well, in the UK, <laughs> which you know is no problem. I understand. You know, um, you you want to own their their names. You know, that's your business. You're top of the game. You know, the best there is essentially. But yeah, man, I like. I'm really on almost side, and I really want to see this dog go far. He has the looks. I feel like he has the charisma. It's just um, he needs to learn English faster. <laughs> yeah, there's that. All right, let's move along a little bit quickly. Uh, we got DIY versus Authors of Pain versus the Revival three way elimination tag match for the NXT Tag Team Championships. I see Authors of Pain retaining here. It's not what I want to see in my heart of hearts. I'd love to see it back on DIY. I'd love to see it back on Revival and maybe a bit of a, a, a babyface run for Revival, although they haven't really... They were kind of hinting at that, but then they haven't been hinting at it. They've been running away from Authors of Pain. So, uh, But I, it feels too soon to me, and, and with what I've got going on in the main events, I'm thinking Authors of Pain... Uh, retain here joe what do you think i'm gonna agree to disagree i'm gonna agree that authors of pain are gonna retain but i don't think that as a bad move just for the fact that the other two are so experienced that you you could set up a feud with either one of them immediately after to nxt takeover again you can throw in a new tag team against the greener guys you can move a couple people up i just i like authors of pain because i want to give them the experience of being champions because look le- le- Let's face it; they're fucking monsters, and like, we got heavy machinery coming up this yeah, week. So, ooh, so, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think authors of pain are going to retain, and I'm happy about it. Taco, yeah, I'm with you guys on the authors of pain retaining. Um, you know, the day one of their debuts, I was kind of like, ah, look, these fucking chumps, they're all right, you know. But you know, on a weekly basis, they've only, you know, they. It, uh, it's kind of like the Braun Strowman thing. They've only shown positivity on a weekly basis, which is great. I and mean, you know, Ellering, uh, Ellering came out and just fucking gave them that uh, fucking. You know, he's like the Viagra to them. He's enhancing them. <laughs> <laughs> so me personally, like I, I, I like DIY. Um, I, I kind of don't want to see them win this one at all. Uh, I just kind of feel like they kind of ran their course with what they are. Um, but revival, like I would like to see the championships on them as well. But at the same time, too, SmackDown, I feel is really hurting for some tag teams right now, and revival would do really good on SmackDown. Right on, I agree with that. Oscar versus Ember Moon for the women's championship. Uh, I've got Ember Moon getting the win here. I think Asuka is going up probably to SmackDown, but I wouldn't be surprised to see her on that uh, surprise Raw. But we might need to save some surprises for Tuesday night's SmackDown Live. So it's Tuesday. 
So I see Ember Moon getting the win here. They've really put over her finisher the last few weeks with uh, uh, Australian gal selling the hell out of Billy her neck. Kay. Billy Kay, yes, thank you. We did that last week. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I always, I always, <laughs> if I don't have the name in front of me, it constantly slips my mind. It doesn't matter who I'm talking about. But, yeah, Billy Kay selling the hell out of the Eclipse from Ember Moon. Um, and I, I've loved the buildup to this. Asuka with the kind of heelish video package a couple of weeks ago, the sunglasses by the pool promo. I loved all that. So I'm looking forward to this match. This could be this could be one of the matches of the weekend. It really could. Oh hell yeah! So uh, Taco, who do you got in this one? Um, yeah, I know uh, uh, Ember Moon's the big favorite to win this match, but I'm still leaning towards Asuka on this one. Uh, I kind of want her to make her main roster debut uh, in the sense of Paige, where you know um, she's the champion, she's undefeated, and you no, know, not not necessarily debut on. Um, I want to see her on SmackDown. SmackDown needs some more women's talent. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Raw is definitely good on that. But, uh, you know, I, I would definitely like her to just be like, Mr. Regal, I've done my time. Here's the championship. I'm moving on. Uh, you know, not necessarily that, but something along those lines where it's just like, um, I, I, I just want to see her main roster de- debut undefeated. Right on. Uh, I, I, I agree with you there, but I, I'm kind of going a different direction that I'll get into in a minute because I like the idea that you say of Asuka uh, debuting undefeated. So I really, what, that's a cool story. I, I, I brought up too, well, like you just said, uh, May is the big rumor for the, the women's division. So, you know, essentially that's almost perfect timing if she wins this weekend and says, there's nobody else from here to beat. Everyone else, a bunch of fucking bitches. See ya, beat it, nerds. I, that's where the women's uh, uh, tournament can come in and for the NXT championship to me. There you go. Joe, what do you think? Uh, I'm with Taco that Asuka's going to win, but I've heard rumblings, and I actually like this idea just because she is a Japanese wrestling worker. They work crazy travel schedules, traveling I mean, between Mexico and Japan and other countries the way they do. I see her pulling double duty. She's NXT Women's Champion, and she debuts on either Raw, or, well, most likely, like you said, debuts on SmackDown and just continues to run rampant on both brands until someone steps up and beats Asuka. It doesn't matter what brand. Obviously, I think the NXT title would go first, but I, I like Asuka winning, and I, I, I want to see her debut as well. Double duty. Then the main event for TakeOver Orlando, Bobby Roode defends the NXT Championship versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Now the reason why I did agree, or, or I like the idea of, of Asuka uh, getting the uh, the win and debuting with the championship, I want to see that happen with Nakamura. Nakamura, to me, needs the win right now more than Asuka. Asuka's already over. If she loses, then all of a sudden Ember Moon has that pedigree, that championship. Asuka, Asuka can go up to the main roster, just kick ass, go undefeated again, and, uh, and just get over with being as awesome as she is. Nakamura, Taco, you've talked about it, how he's soured a little bit for you. He, we haven't had a, a, a lot of cool stuff with him being on TV lately. He's been out selling injuries and whatnot. Not. So, oh, yeah. I, so I think in this match, Nakamura needs the win. If he goes up, great. I want to see him go up, have him go up as NXT champion, and have him relinquish the championship, just like I stole your idea with uh, with the same thing what Paige did, release, <laughs> release the women's championship, just like Paige. I'm stealing that idea for Nakamura, and then they can have... You know, some kind of tournament for the men's uh, uh, championship, and then Rude can win it back, or, or you go another direction. But uh, well, go ahead. we got to remember too with Paige, she she was dual champion, and that's when they said you can't be doing that. Uh, kept, remember Kevin Owens debuting; he was still NXT championship when he, champion when he was coming on to Raw and so, fucking up John Cena. So then I think you have Nakamura debut on Tuesday and beat AJ Styles. <laughs> or uh, no, I guess it would be Randy Orton probably then, but or either Randy or or uh, or uh, uh, Bray Wyatt for the championship night one. And- Could even turn it into the deal basically where he has to relinquish the title for an opportunity. You know, if you want this opportunity to come up here to SmackDown and face the big boys, face the champion, you've got to turn that in. Right, right. You know, see, this is where I kind of disagree with you guys. Is um, fuck you, uh, I, I, <laughs> fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, you're right. I should do every podcast drunk. 
<laughs> well, the problem is, is that we're over an hour and a half right now, so we're going to have to skip the uh, Ring of Honor and New Japan oh, stuff. Such a good episode. <laughs> but go ahead, Taco. It's, Wrestle- it's WrestleMania week. It's, it, it's bound, we're bound to have a long episode. Yep, yep. It, it's it's going it's to happen. Um, go ahead. I think most of it's just me drunk ranting. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I'm like ready, half these subjects. I'm ready to move on and talk. I was like, oh, but then you know, I got to think about this and talk about this other guy for a couple of minutes. Go ahead, but, uh, get your get your shit uh, in, kid. I, I have <laughs> I have rude winning because um um Nakamura. Yeah, they've kind of kind of beat him in the ground a little bit in NXT, and it's really disappointing because you know he's had such great feuds with them. Um, you know, had a great match with Zayn, had a great match with Balor. You know, just like everything should be you know phenomenal, fucking great things. But to me, it really hasn't been yet. Um, to me, uh, what did you say, Nakamura and AJ Styles, uh, Mutt or Tuesday? Um, I'm gonna have to disagree with that. I think that's a match. Um, uh, they could say for SummerSlam. No, you're right. They should build up to that properly. But he could, he, he could beat uh, Randy Orton or Bray Wyatt right out of the gate for the championship. But that would mm-hmm. be a little too copying exactly what Paige did. So I'm <laughs> interested to see what they do. I just, um, yeah, it's just, um, I don't know I feel like it's too soon. Um, just keep him in NXT for a while. Still, it's just like. He should be on main roster for sure, but uh, I feel like the storyline, especially with like how last year's SummerSlam was with AJ Styles and John Cena, I feel like they're kind of going back towards taking SummerSlam serious again. Cause, oh, for you know, sure, they're, definitely. They're taking they're they're going back and taking Survivor Series serious again. So well, especially you know, now that I they're doing like, branded shows too. Mm-hmm. So I feel like having a Nakamura AJ Styles match on SummerSlam, yeah, it's a match I want to see at, at the greatest thrill ride WrestleMania. But that's definitely going to enhance SummerSlam to that next level shit with that they need, where people are like, "Oh fuck, SummerSlam is right back to WrestleMania, WrestleMania caliber." And I'm actually looking forward too to this match in ring style. Not the second Nakamura Bobby Roode match, I really liked. Uh, I liked the Nakamura uh, match that he had with TJ Perkins a few mm-hmm. a few weeks match a few weeks back. So this being Roode and Nakamura's uh, third match, I just think it's going to be that much better in the ring. So I'm looking oh, forward, yeah. forward to that too, as far as an in ring uh, match again with Nakamura in there and the the, the 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 entrances between these two, the spectacle of, of it all, a mm-hmm. chance it's another show stealing match, a potential to steal the weekend. So uh, well, it's awesome weekend. Yep, exactly. Exactly. So that's another big one to look forward to on Saturday. So like I said, we went we went long, but the good news is is that I just recently started a new podcast where I talk exclusively Ring of Honor and New Japan. So <gasps> tell me more. Yeah, you can go to thefanspodcast.com and check out uh, all the great podcasts that they have there, but also Strong Honor. That's the name of the show. So go, uh, look up the podcast, The Fans Podcast. Scroll through that feed. Look for the Strong Honor Podcast, and I'll have predictions on there. Probably, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll probably record it in the, in the, within the next couple of days. And who knows, Taco, maybe if you're available, maybe I'll get you back on the phone and uh, have you join me. Uh, or maybe, Joe, I know uh, you're into some of this Ring of Honor stuff, Love too. So Ring of Honor stuff. We, we, well, I'll, be, I'll be back Friday. So We watched, uh, we watched uh, the Ring of Honor show from this week today, and there's lots of fun matchups to talk about. Christopher! So, <laughs> yes, we got to talk Dalton Castle going for the championship and trying his first ever apple teeny. So look for that on Strong <laughs> Honor. <laughs> and uh, and look for Taco and I as guests on the Attitude of Aggression podcast. Now, that hasn't dropped yet, but it should drop later this week because we discussed all things WrestleMania. So Attitude of Aggression is the name of that show. Taco and I were guests on there. We're going to be back next week on this show talking all the fallout from WrestleMania, Monday Night Raw, Tuesday SmackDown, NXT TakeOver. We're going to talk about it all because we are the best pro wrestling podcast. Hashtag Hashtag the best. best. We talk the best pro wrestling in the world. Twinsies. And that's what we do. Okay. (laughs) We have ESPN. And it was amazing how you guys even timed it with the weird delay that Taco's on, too. That actually worked out pretty good. So follow uh, follow the Best Pro Wrestling Podcast on Twitter at BPW Podcast. Everybody's on Facebook. Tell your friends about this show and how much you love it. Do it on Facebook, facebook.com slash Best Pro Wrestling Podcast. Rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. That helps us out. Just tell everybody about the show. Go to bestprowrestlingpodcast.com for back, uh, back episodes and whatnot. 
Email the show, best pro wrestling podcast at gmail.com. And you can find me, your host, Tommy Stryker, on Twitter at Tommy Stryker, spell Stryker with a Y. Taco, where can people find you? Uh, you can follow me on the Snapchat, the Twitter, and the Instagram at Nia Jackson Soap Green at, no, I'm just kidding, um, at HGREV Taco. And Joe, where can people find you? Well, you can find me at pretty much just on Twitter at B W C H K A B R W N C O W. Yeah, the, the, the didn't work this week, Taco. Uh, B W C H K A B R W N C O W to find Joe. Nobody's looking it up because that's obnoxious. That's going to do it for the best pro wrestling podcast. Bye. Peace. Peace.